Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Lord, we thank you for the gathering of your saints, God. We thank you for another Sunday at Remnant International Church, God. Lord, we give this service to you this morning, God. Lord, we pray even now, God, your will in this service, God. Lord, that whatever comes forth is what is needed by those who are watching, those who are partaking, Father God. We cancel all plans of the enemy, Father God, throughout the world, in the churches, in our cities, in our towns, Father God, we cancel his assignment in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We give you glory for another day, God, for this is the day that you have made, God, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We will not be fearful in it. We will not believe the lies of the enemy, but we will believe your word, Father. We stand on your word, unmovable. We won't budge, Father God. We just thank you this morning, God. Lord, we pray even now for your manservant, Pastor Calvin, God, that you would fill him up until he overflows, Father, with what you have given him to pour out today. We thank you in advance for the life-changing word, for the eye-opening word, for the sea parting word. We thank you for the word, God. Lord, we want to be rooted and grounded in your word, God. We don't want to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. So we thank you for the unlocking and the key to open doors, God, to enter into new dimensions and deeper levels of freedom. We thank you for this word that is coming this morning to free the people of God. Father, it is not our way, but it is you your way, God. So gird him up, God. We just pray even now a hedge of protection. Let nothing come against the word that is proceeding out of his mouth this morning. We just give you all glory, honor, and praise. We pray against all technical difficulties in Jesus' name that the enemy would be silent today as the word of God goes forth. We just thank you, God. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the words that you have prophesied over our lives in years past. And we thank you that this is the season that we're walking into exactly what you have said. Lord, I give you praise, honor, and glory this morning, God. There is none like you in all the earth. So we thank you, God. We will praise your name. No rocks will cry out for us, God. We will offer up the fruit of our lips this morning. We will offer up a hand clap of praise today, God, knowing that you are God and there is no other. I just thank you this morning. I give you glory, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for just joining us for another service at Remnant International Church. If this is your first time, welcome. If you've been here before, then welcome back. To find out more about us, you can log on to our website at remnantinternationalchurch.com. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. But I wanted to share really quickly before I turn it over, because this is a meaty word this morning. This is a word that the people of God need. Um, but as I was sitting, just waiting and preparing and praying, I began to see like angels being released over cities. I saw angels being released. And they were releasing the glory of God. So if anyone knows about the glory, they know that there's healing in the glory. There's protection in the glory. There's miracle in the glory. And even as I sat there, the Lord said, just reach out and grab it. You have to reach out and grab it. He said, if we turn our attention to the world and what's going on in the world, we will miss it, right? God is elevating us in this season. He wants to take us deeper in this season, but he needs to see where you're
your faith is at. So if you have faith this morning, press in to God, press into this word, and share it with someone so they can grab a hold of biblical truth too today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Calvin and just prepare your hearts and your minds to receive the word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you to my beautiful wife, Linda. <laughs> Pastor Linda. Amen. Father, we just thank you and we praise you this morning. We just worship you, Lord God. Father, we just welcome you into this place. We just ask that you would just have your way this morning, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Father, we invite you in. We ask that your spirit just calm and saturate the atmosphere, Lord God. That it would change me, Lord God, and that it would use me, Lord God, to be that messenger you've created me to be, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Father, we lift up all your sons and daughters to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. You know what's going on right now. You know about a coronavirus, Lord God. People are panicking, not knowing where to turn, Lord God. It's keeping people from your houses of worship, Lord God. Father, we bind that virus now in the mighty name of Jesus, that nothing would keep your sons and daughters from coming together, Hallelujah. to gather together in worship, Hallelujah. Lord God. Whether it's man-made, whatever way it came, Lord God, Father, we bind it now in the name of Jesus. Pastor Linda said she already saw the glory, the angels just going forth and releasing the healing, Lord God. Father, I pray that those, Lord God, that know you, Lord God, even those that don't, Lord God, and don't know where to turn, that they would look up to you for their help, Lord God, and that the healing would come forth in the name of Jesus, that this virus too would be bound in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we wouldn't lose any more lives, that no one would have to panic, that we would trust and believe in our Father. Lord, help your people, your sons and daughters this morning, Lord God, no matter where they are, no matter where they are in the world, Lord God, that this too shall pass, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to stand strong and stand firm, Lord God, and not be afraid of what's going on in the world, in the world Lord God, but to trust in you, Lord God. Help people to understand that things that are happening too have been spoken about in your book, Lord God, and that they have to, we as a people, have to surrender to your will and your way. Help us, Lord God. Help us in our time of need, Lord God. Help those who don't know where to turn, Lord God. That someone, Lord God, who knows you, Lord God, would minister with, just lift up a prayer, Lord God, would introduce them to a Father who loves them, Lord God. Father, we just thank you and praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way this morning, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We also want to lift up those that are uh, we're connected to, Lord God, that has asked us to keep them lifted up in Amen. prayer, Lord God. Uh, those that are from Overcomers, group of churches, the prayers that were requested, Lord God. Father, we lift them up to you this morning, this morning in the name of Jesus. We lift up the head of the ministry, our apostle, apostle Peter Maria Gabadia, Lord God, and what he's doing in Philadelphia this weekend and what he does with all of his ministries, Lord God. Father, we lift up those from remnant, Lord God, that have asked us for prayer, Lord God. Anyone, Lord God, has asked for prayer, Lord God. The healing doesn't come from us, Lord God. It comes from you, Lord God. Those needs, Lord God, we can't do them, but there's nothing that you can't do, Lord God. Father, we lift those people up to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, asking that your will would be done in each circumstance, Lord God, that you would go in and see about them, Lord God, and let your will be done, Lord God. 
Help your people, Lord God, that they never have to turn to someplace else, Lord God, but that they know that all their hope is in you, Lord God. We just thank you for always showing up, always being there, Lord God, always, Lord God, on call. We thank you and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. We've been speaking on a, a series from a book called Strong Man's His Name, What's His Game? His Game by Drs. Jerry and Carol Robinson. It's about spiritual warfare. And to me right now, to us right now, there's nothing more important than learning and growing from spiritual warfare because some of us don't even know that about the spirit realm and the things that are happening in the spirit realm, whether this virus came from the spirit realm or whether it was man-made, however it was produced, different things that are happening in the spirit realm, we as the body of Christ, those that are been called to the front line to fight the good fight for God, for our Father who fights for us, has to know about these things so we know how to fight them. One of the things that we have to fight about that they reference in the book is about lying. Amen. Now, when you think about lying, everyone, I'm not saying everyone lies, but everyone has been involved in someone who's just, who just can't help themselves but lying all the time. That's all they do, lying to make themselves look good, lying for whatever particular reason, lying so they can puff themselves up and not knowing that it's a spirit. It may not have always been that and stuff, but it could have just started off with them wanting to see that in a certain way and stuff, and then all you need is that open door, and then the spirit comes, and that's all they're doing. They can't even stop now. We are lying in our churches. We get lying in our businesses. We get lying in our jobs. We get lying in our, in our homes. It's got to stop. So we pray now that this information that we're sharing and stuff would help us to be able to recognize, to repent, to seek God's face so that we can crush that lying spirit and send it back to the pit where it belongs. When you think about lying, it says it's a false statement made with a deliberate intent to deceive an unintentional truth a falsehood lying to speak falsely or utter untruth knowingly as with an intent to deceive to express what is false convey a false impression he was talking about in the book, due to a lack of a more complete knowledge of God, that there are many occasions in the Old Testament when actions attributed to God were in reality the actions of the devil. We know this now because of further revelation in the New Testament. So it's mandatory to clearly understand what God's area of operation is in the spirit world as well as the devil's. Mm -hmm. Let me emphasize, excuse me, that not everyone who lies is possessed by a lying spirit. But each lie can be a step down the road to such a condition. Some of the areas in which a lying spirit is specifically involved in are, we've all heard old wise tales, superstitions, mm -hmm. gossip, backbiting, false prophets mm -hmm. and teachers, yeah. strong delusions mm -hmm. or deceptions, and of course, lies. But thank God in Hebrew 13 and 8 it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday 
and today and forever. Meaning he's internally changeless. He's always the same. He never lies. And we can put our trust in him. He said, don't put your trust in man because he'll lie. But he said, he's eternally changeless. He'll always remain the same. He talked a little bit about superstitions. He said, but God's word gives conclusive evidence that there's no such thing as luck. Either good or bad. For the child of God who is obediently following God's will as revealed in the Bible for the, for the child of God who is obediently following God's will as revealed in the Bible we receive what we need not because of good or bad luck but because God provides it he's our provider right according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 and 19. When a child of God believes that bad luck can haphazardly strike him at some unfortunate turn in the road, he is not only doubting God's ability to watch over him, but he's believing the lies of the enemy. We are to stand fast and hold the tradition which we have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 15. Now, how many people said good luck, good luck all the time, right? Good luck, you know, wishing you good luck and everything else. And here it is, it's telling us that we can't believe in either good or bad, that we have to trust in God because he's our provider. God provides. He said we can't put any other God before him. So when you're talking about luck, good or bad, you're putting something else before God, and that's not of him. Amen. We have to correct ourselves in the way we're doing things. Mm -hmm. Another point was strong deception. Mm. Strong deception. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 9 through 13, said the coming of the Antichrist, the lawless one, is through the activity of Satan, attended with great power, all kinds of counterfeit miracles and deceptive signs and false wonders, all of them lies. And by unlimited seduction to evil with all the deception of wickedness for those who are perishing, because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel, so as to be saved, they were spiritually blind and rejected the truth that would have saved them. Because of this, God will send upon them a misleading influence, an activity of error and deception, so they will believe the lie in order that all may be judged and condemned who, do, who did not believe the truth about their sin and the need for salvation through Christ, but instead took pleasure in unrighteousness. But we should and are morally obligated as debtors always to give thanks to God for you, believers beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through the sanctifying work of the spirit that sets you apart for God's purpose and by your faith in the truth of God's word that leads you to spiritual maturity. Amen. Spiritual maturity is when you're understanding that God's word is, is it. There's nothing else, right? We can't be manipulated. Strong deception is the thing that makes uh, people believe that a man can sleep with a man, a man can sleep with a child, a woman can sleep with a woman, um, and that it's okay, that God's still going to love you. Yes, God still loves you. Let me get that straight. God still loves you, but he'll never love or accept those actions that you believe is okay and that he will agree with. 
He's saying it right here. That's where the strong deception comes in. Those people who tell you that it's okay and it's all right, those are the deceptors. They're telling you because you live in a certain lifestyle and stuff that God's going to hate you and you're automatically going to the pit. God never hates you. He sent his son for you too, so that you too may be saved. It wasn't for our select people. It was for each and every one of us. What he's saying is, those things that are not of God, he hates. I said earlier, he remains the same. It doesn't change. He's not going to change his mind because a certain person believes like, oh, God made a mistake. I should have been born this way. God don't make no mistakes. So when you're saying that and stuff, you're saying you're greater than God because you're telling God you made a mistake. Who are you to tell God he made a mistake? If God made you a man, you're a man. If God made you a woman, you're a woman. Man and woman. That's how it's supposed to be. That's what it says in the world. It's not us hating you because you want to do your own thing. You've been deceived. Amen. But there's still time. He still loves you. All we have to do, all you have to do is repent. <clears throat> repent and walk away from that. Admit, I've been deceived. I've been taken advantage of. I no longer want to live this kind of a lifestyle. I surrender to the perfect will of God. That's why we come on Sundays. That's why we come on prayer calls. That's why we come and lift people up in prayer. That's why we share in his word. None of us are perfect. Each of us have a history. And if God can forgive us for the things that we've done in our past, he can forgive you too. Come to Jesus this morning, people. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now. Psalms talks about flattery. And it's referenced in the book of Psalms, the 78th chapter, the 36th verse says, Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongue. Oh, dude, we've all been there, right? You had somebody flattered you. Some people have been taking advantage of that. Some people may have lost their house because of flattery and no and, and them speaking to them and lied with their tongues and wind up taking their home. Mm-hmm. Wind up uh, their bank accounts or whatever else and stuff like that. Different things and stuff. You know, uh, maybe even be in a relationship because of it right now, right? Because you were flattered so much and stuff like that and not asking God, is this the person I'm supposed to be with? This is what we got into, right? Flattery under Proverbs 26 and 28. A lying tongue hates those it wounds and crushes. And a flattering mouth works ruin. Proverbs 29 and 5. A man who flatters his neighbor with smooth words intending to do harm is spread a net for his own feet. So he's saying that when we listen to the flattery, when we get... uh, uh, when we take that flattery in and thinking that it's a good thing and things, somebody's setting us up for a fall. Mm-hmm. It's setting us up for a fall. But the things that we do, we don't get glory in. God gets the glory. Amen. Everything we do, we say, to God be the glory. That's right. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Superstitions. 1 Timothy, 4th chapter, 7th verse. But have nothing to do with irreverent folklore and silly myths. On the other hand, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness, keeping yourself spiritually fit. Uh And how do we do that? We stay in his word, right? We're in a prayer group, right? We have a prayer partner, right? We're not getting caught up in that spirit of the deception and the, and the flattery and stuff so that we'd be set up for a fall or be involved in something that we shouldn't be involved be involved in. 
religious bondages. Galatians 5 and 1. It was for this freedom that Christ set us free, completely liberating us. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery, which you once removed. Religious bondages, right? Religious bondages and stuff to me could be uh, uh, different churches, right? Right? Uh, you got, I don't want to start beating up churches and stuff, but again, just reading and stuff. You, you have different churches and everybody has their own different way of doing things, right? But it's about, that's where the, I, I spoke, of, and it says it here, religious. That's the religious and stuff. We want the relationship. And if you're seeking a relationship with God, he'll tell you about the religious bondages. He'll tell you if you're in a place to have you in a religious bondage. I don't want to beat up nobody. I don't want to say anything. All this is new and stuff, and I didn't come here to do that and stuff. You have to know. What I'm telling people is it's not about religion. It's about relationship. Amen. And if you have a relationship with God, a relationship is one person talking to another. Well, we're talking to our God. And if you're not in a place where you're supposed to be in, or where you're being fed, at, or where you're supposed to grow and be empowered to go forth and do something, that's religious bondage. If you've been assigned to do a certain thing in a ministry and stuff, and God had you doing something else, that's religious bondage. If you're supposed to be a pastor and they got you ushering and stuff, that's religious bondage. If you're not going out and doing and sharing his word, that's religious bondage. Look at it. Get the relationship. Hallelujah. We keep praying, we keep saying every Sunday that we want everyone to make it when we all get to heaven. We've all sung that when we all get to heaven. We keep singing, we sing it and sing and shout for victory. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout for victory. But will we all get to heaven? Amen. If you're under religious bondage, if you're under these things, the lying, the flattery, and all these different things, how are you going to get to heaven? You don't have to listen to me. But then you won't be part of that place in heaven. I'm not saying I don't have anything to do with you getting to heaven. All I'm doing is trying to share something. I don't have a yay or nay as far as you getting in. Jesus ain't going to go, and God ain't going to say, uh, Cal 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 should uh, he get in heaven? I ain't got no say so. <laughs> All I can do is now, while we're here on earth, share a word with you. Share something with you that I found important, that I found that God wanted us to share and bring to the people because it's not being taught. So that we, have, we can all get to heaven. That's the goal. We all get to heaven. We all get to heaven and sing and shout in victory. When we all see King Jesus, we'll sing and shout for victory. And we can look down at that clown and say, you ain't getting out of one. Imagine. Imagine. Even if it just started from today. If we all False prophecy, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 16 and 17 says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the false prophets who prophesy to you. They are teaching you worthless things and, and leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own mind and imagination and do not, and not truth from the mouth of the Lord, they are continually saying to those who despise me and my word, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And they say to everyone who walks after the stubbornness of their own heart, no evil will come upon you. One of the things we ask for here is the spirit of discernment. God's discernment. We want his wisdom. 
We want his knowledge. We want his understanding. But the spirit of discernment, if we can have a spirit of discernment, so we won't be manipulated, we won't be tricked, and we won't be pulled out of God's will. That when these false prophecies and these false people come and try to move us from our relationship with God, we can bind them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. These people are just coming just to speak things into us to keep us from receiving our rewards in heaven. I don't know anything else that I could follow after God sent his only son to sacrifice for his life for me. Who else would I follow? There's nobody else. Over and over and over again, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit showed up for me in numerous ways. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. So many people say that, but I'm telling you, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. Thank you, Jesus. So who else would I follow? Jeremiah, the 27th chapter, verses 9 and 10. And as for you, do not listen to your counterfeit prophets and your diviners, your dreamers and dreamers, your soothsayers, your sorcerers, who say to you, you will not serve the king of Babylon. For their prophecy, for they prophesy a lie to you, which will cause you to be removed far from the land, and I will drive you out and you will perish. Which was what I just spoke on and what was just be spoken on previously, right? It's about us losing our place in, the, in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets, teachers who come to you dressed as sheep, appearing gentle and innocent, but inward are ravenous wolves. Right? I spoke about that spirit of discernment, right? Accusation. This is good. Revelations 12 and 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, meaning dominion and reign of our God, and the authority of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters has been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. Accusations. How many times we've been accused of things that weren't ours, right? There's really no way to get out of it, but only God knows the truth, right? right. Because when you're accused, you're gonna have. I mean, most people we say it's that person's word, it's my word, and then there's the truth, right? So most people will always still hold you in that accusation and things when they don't have a discerning spirit of God, right? Or we shouldn't even be judging, so we shouldn't be holding anyone in that anyway, but we do anyway, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. But God said Christ has come with all authority, and his accusers have been thrown down at last. We better put our trust in God this morning. Mm -hmm. Psalms 31 and 18, let the lying lips be mute which speak insolently and arrogantly against the consistently righteous with pride and contempt. Let it be. Slander, Proverbs 10th chapter, verse 10, verse, Proverbs 10 and 18, he who hides hatred has lying lips. And he who spreads slander is a fool. You can't really hide hatred and stuff. Uh, people's uh, actions and things tell about them. They may not speak it and stuff, but one way or another, you're going to find it. And slander is a fool. They're foolish people. I mean, you're spreading slander because, I don't know, maybe you want to be with that particular person. I, I, I just don't understand. Help them, Lord. Help, 
help us as a people this morning. Same thing with gossip, right? First Timothy, the sixth chapter and twentieth verse. O Timothy, guard and keep safe the deposit of godly truth entrusted to you. Turn away from worldly and godless chatter with its profane, profane and empty words and the contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Gossip, there's no knowledge in gossip. It's not something that we're supposed to be taking in. Mm-hmm. It's us belittling a brother or sister mm-hmm. or something that may not be true. And whether it's true or not, we shouldn't be sharing it anyway. Who are we? We're not the news. Right? That's what the news do. They gossip. They gossip and stuff. They gossip about things that have already happened and stuff. They put people in a state of panic. It should be more informational, but it seems like it's more gossip. If you've ever done anything wrong, you would hate to be in that per- in that person who's done something wrong because they come after you like ravenous wolves. And that's what happens with gossip and that. People start coming after you like ravenous wolves. I heard such and such. I heard such and such. Did you hear it from me? <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Second Timothy 2 and 16. But avoid all irrelevant babble and godless chatter with his profane and empty words, for it will lead to further unrighteousness. We just spoke on that. Proverbs. 6, 16 through 19. These six things the Lord, the Lord hates. Indeed, seven are repulsive to him. A proud look. The attitude that makes one overestimate oneself and discount others. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that creates wicked plans, feet that run swiftly to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, even half-truths, and one who spreads discord, rumors among brothers. We can break this down and stuff, and everybody knows about this, right? I mean, the proud look. We got folks like that now, right? Uh, Won't talk to you maybe because they figure that they're in that 1%, that that, that 1% could be because of their title, their job, whatever it is and stuff like that feeling like you're below them, or my house is bigger, I spoke on that before previously, whatever it is and stuff. No, God. The lying tongue, we know that's not of God. Hands that shed innocent blood, thou shalt not murder. The innocent blood, right? A heart that creates wicked plans. Mm. How many people have you run into like that? A heart that creates wicked plans. Feet that run swiftly to evil. False witnesses. And one who just spread, spreads discord, rumors among brethren. We have that right in our churches. Right? We have that right in people just saying, uh, he's not a real pastor and stuff like that. Right? He wasn't this and he wasn't that, right? I already said it, right? Use um, discernment. False teachers. False teachers are talking about the whole second book of uh, the whole book of Second Peter. I'm not going to read the whole book of Second Peter and stuff. It's not it's, it's a bit of it's a bit, but you can read it on your own and just thinking about false teachers. False teachers take us out of the will of God. It doesn't allow us to um, continue in our growth and being the men and women that God has created us to be. It's things that we need discernment for so that we don't allow anything or anyone to keep us from our relationship with God. The root. Works of the flesh, Galatians 5, 19 and 21. The roots is the roots of the causes of all these different things. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality. Impurity, sensuality, 
total irresponsibility or lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote him heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these, I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I read the list. If you're involved in any of these things, I urge you now to take the time and repent, to seek God's face, to change before Jesus comes back. Or else you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not Calvin says it. Saying here it is in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 19 through 21. We have time to make a change right now. As long as you have breath in your body right now where you are, any of these things, any of them, I'll say them again, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, the total irresponsibility and lack of self-control, adultery, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these, you will receive the kingdom. No matter what you've done here, there's nothing that we do here that's going to allow us to enter the kingdom. It's the things that we don't, the things that we don't do. It's the things that God has set for us to do, we get done. But it's the things that God has asked us not to do that keeps us from receiving the gift, the inheritance of the kingdom. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> by their fruits you shall know them. Matthew, the seventh chapter, the twentieth verse. Therefore, by their fruits you will recognize them as false prophets. According to Matthew 18, 18, I assure you and sol solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, meaning forbid, to clear, to be improper, and unlawful on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose, meaning permit, declare lawful on earth shall have already been loose in heaven. So it's telling us, I mean, how many churches bind things in the name of Jesus? How many things, church, how many ministries loose things in the name of heaven? Again, I'm not calling out any churches. I'm telling us as a people, even if you want to stay in that ministry that we in our relationship with God have to know these things so we can fight the good fight from a spiritual perspective. Amen. I mean, how do you want to fight the, the fight if you don't know these things? Amen. This is how we fight. We fight from a spiritual perspective. From a spiritual perspective. Bind. We bind that lion spirit. All of those different things that have been mentioned, and even the ones that may have been left out, we have to bind them in the name of Jesus. Anything you buy, you have to lose something after it. But we have to bind it. Each one of those different things that keeping people from receiving his kingdom and stuff, we're binding them in the name of Jesus. We're binding anything that keeps the people of God from receiving Receiving the reward of being with God. Anything in their family line, anything in their homes, anything on their jobs, their businesses, in the churches, anything that's from that learning spirit, we bind it today in the name of Jesus that the people of God would receive their reward and nothing would keep them from their relationship with God. As I said, after, after you buy these things, you have to lose things. 
and we lose the spirit of truth. That spirit of truth is Jesus. That spirit of truth is his word. That spirit of truth is depending and trusting on him and knowing that only him, he can bring us through. It says in John 14 and 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains within you continually and will be in you. Jesus came, took care of business. He came down and handled his business. Everything God told him to do, he did it with a spirit of excellence. And even after he left, he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. When I go home, I'm going to leave my spirit. I'm going to impart my Holy Spirit within each of you so you will know that you're never alone. So many people think that we're alone. We're walking this walk by ourselves. Dude, we're never alone. If you have a relationship with God, I'm not talking about religion. I said a relationship with God. He's imparted a Holy Spirit in you that would carry you through anything. That when people try to say, you can't do this, you can't be this, you can't have that, you can't accomplish anything, you rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And by your lying spirit, Bind them, bind them, bind them in the name of Jesus and loose the spirit of truth. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. John 15 and 26. But when the helper, that's the Holy Spirit, right? He's our comforter. He's an advocate. He's an intercessor. He's a counselor. He's our strengthener. He's always on standby. Come. Whom I will send, not Calvin, Jesus will send to you from the Father. That is the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father. He will testify and be a witness about me. Get the relationship. Hallelujah. Get the relationship this morning. Get the relationship so that God can send me comforter. God can send that advocate for you. God can send that intercessor. God can send that counselor. God can send the strengthener and always be on standby. I remember back in the old days, we used to pick up the phone and we tried to call somebody and if they're already on the phone, you would get a busy signal. You would have to call them back another time. You can call up Jesus anytime and never get a busy signal. That's right. That's what stand by me. I'll always be there ready, willing, and able. All you have to do is call them up. And it don't cost you anything. G John, the 16th chapter, the first 13th verse, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, full and complete truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message with God and the Son. He will disclose to you what is to come in the future. So again, we don't look for those people, those, those other people that uh, want to share the future with us, fortune tellers and everything else. We don't seek that. We're not seeking God's face and stuff to ask him like, uh, Lord, what's going to happen to me tomorrow? Uh, what's going to What's my future going to be like? Uh, who am I going to marry? All we do is believe and trust in Him. When He feels certain things that we need to know, He brings it to us. He gives us the information. He gives it to us to use it, to utilize it for His purpose. Not that we go out and be use it and say we know this or or anything that it glorifies us we you when he gives us information it's usually for a purpose wind this up in the prayer it says father we approach your throne of mercy in the blessed name of jesus we can see that we've been leaving a door open in our lives 
to the attacks of this lying strong man because of a lack of faith and knowledge of your word. Forgive us and help us walk in the freedom of your truth from this day on. Satan, in the name of Jesus, we bind you and your lying spirit according to Matthew 18, 18, and informs us, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We close this open door to the lying spirits in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us victory over the lying strong man according to matthew 18 18 that promises whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven we loose the spirit of truth in our lives help us to read your word each day so that we can maintain the dominion over satan that we need in these last days thank you lord for guiding our lives and answering our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We just share from Strong Man's his Name, What's His Game? A book that we're reading and growing and learning from. We want to be a deliverance ministry. We want to do what God has called us to do. And we can help set people free. And we can empower them to go forth and do what God has called them to do. We have to understand as a people that when we surrender to God, all of us have been called into ministry. As soon as you say, I do to him, you become a minister for Christ. Amen. You're an evangelist for Christ. Amen. You're supposed to be going out sharing the word of God with people, bringing people to the Father. Those of us that have a heart after God already do that and things like if we learn about something good that was one before when uh i used to get job information and i i had a i have a great job so i would want others to also have a great job too so i would get and have people's um email addresses and i'm sharing that information and sending it out so that they too may have an opportunity to grow. It's the same thing we do with the word of God. When something is this good, we can't keep it to ourselves. We want everybody to get it. We especially want our families to get it. But everyone is our family. Everybody is our brothers and our sisters and stuff. Even those that haven't accepted it yet. Even those that haven't surrendered. You still have time. You still have time. Look at what's happening right now. Can you afford not to be under this kind of recovery? Is this something that you really want to walk that walk on your own? Because of those lying spirits that poured into you, telling you you don't need Jesus. You don't need God. I guarantee you that when we surrender our lives to him, that he'll bring us through. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He protects us. And even if it's our time that comes, we know that life isn't over. The real life just begun because when we're no longer here with him, here on earth, we're with him in heaven. Please understand what's going on. Please, it's about the relationship with God. Please relate to him. He says, read his word. He says, lift up a prayer. Get a prayer partner. Make sure we have a relationship with God this morning. Repent for these things that we have incorporated into our lives, that people said, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, a little white line can't hurt nobody. It can keep you from receiving your gift, your entrance into heaven. I just thank God this morning for this word and praying that it just touches someone, Lord God. There's someone somewhere, Lord God, with see the value of what's being shared here at Remnant International Church, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that when we all get to heaven, Lord God, 
we will sing and shout for victory. That we can look down on the enemy and, and, and laugh that none have been left behind, Lord God. That all your people, Lord God, all, Lord God, are there with you, Lord God. Help them to receive it, Lord God. Help that lion spirit be broken off of your people this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that your word, Lord God, that you would send, Lord God, someone who already knows you, Lord God, someone already knows your word, Lord God, to minister to your sons and daughters, Lord God, to help them, Lord God, to seek your face. Help them, Lord God, that they too may have a place in your kingdom. We just thank you for today's word, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you be glorified. To you be the glory, the honor, and all the praise, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat>